pressure in the fight back against these Georgia voter suppression laws. Signs some of it's working. Georgia Representative Cannon speaking out today. This is the first time since she was arrested for simply trying to, as you saw there, knock on the door where she works, protest the secrecy involved as the governor signed that bill. I believe the governor's signing into law the most comprehensive voter suppression bill in the country is a far more serious crime. He minimized the deaths of thousands who have paid the ultimate price for the right to vote. Activists on the ground in Georgia say they have her back and they're pushing these big boycotts of many companies in the state who won't take sides, who won't stand up on these issues. President Biden, meanwhile, agreeing with the Major League Baseball All-Star game that it shouldn't be in Georgia anymore either. I would strongly support them doing that. This is Jim Crow on steroids, what they're doing in, in Georgia and 40 other states. Joining us now is The New York Times' Michelle Goldberg. As I mentioned, we've got more than one story going. This one is obviously important. Uh, your view on what we're seeing there in this backlash. I think we've seen this in a number of cases where, you know, the incentives for corporate America and the incentives for the Republican Party are obviously in some sense aligned in that the Republican Party is the party of big business and low taxes, whatever you know, sort of populist pretensions they put on. But in terms of the people that they have to appeal to, they're very different, right? The central crisis in American politics, and I've said this over and over and over again, is that the Republican Party is dependent on minority rule. It's not interested um, in appealing or reaching a majority of the American people. Whereas brands, you know, big corporations sort of by definition are trying to reach as many people as possible. And they're particularly, they need to reach young people. They need to reach affluent people. And so they are subject to a sort of pressure that um, Republicans simply aren't. It's something that we saw with the um, in North Carolina a couple of years ago when they passed this really draconian anti-trans bill, and you saw huge numbers of boycotts, um, you know, billions and billions of dollars in losses, and the pressure was enough that um, North Carolina, you know, both elected a Democratic governor, but also. Um, repealed that bill. And so I think you'll see similar kinds of pressure here, both on corporations to condemn Georgia. And I would expect also just to boycott Georgia directly. I mean, it'll be interesting to see what Hollywood does, because Georgia is a big site, has a big film industry. A lot of people, you know, make TV shows there and film, film movies there. And so Hollywood is going to have um, some, I would imagine, something to say about this. Hmm. All really great points. You mentioned the, the fact that there's a problem with democracy, uh, which brings us exactly to the next thing I wanted to show you. Mitch McConnell saying Republicans just won't support Biden's jobs and infrastructure bill. And I think that package that they're putting together now, as much as we would like to, to address infrastructure, is not going to get uh, support from our side. He'd like to do it. Well, so would a lot of his voters. 74% of Republicans support at least some kind of infrastructure improvement. A third even support doing it with tax increases. Uh, Michelle. I don't think there was ever any possibility that the Republicans are going to cooperate with Biden on a big infrastructure package. I mean, it does make you realize what an open opportunity Trump would have had if he actually had any sort of organization and initiative. He probably could have gotten a huge infrastructure bill passed with a lot of Democratic support, a fair amount of Republican support, and, you know, kind of could have had a legacy other than, you know, the sort of disgraceful farce that, that he has. But that's a I think that it's so important that Biden is approaching his um, promise, uh, promises around bipartisanship as something that appeals to people on both sides of the political divide, as opposed to something that appeals to Susan Collins, right? And so this is a bipartisan initiative because it has the support, you know, overwhelming support of the majority of the American people. Right. And in some polls, it has more support when it when there are tax increases for the rich included than when it's um, you know kind of paid for by debt or paid for in other ways. 
Yeah, and cliches and bad ideas uh, linger and endure for all sorts of the wrong reasons. Uh, you and I have spoken about fact-checking this idea. If something has tens of millions of Republicans supporting it, um, by definition, one senator or 10 doesn't cancel that out. It just adds to the number. So Collins, McConnell, whomever can't cancel out all these other Republican voters. And it's incumbent, I think, on Washington to sort of relearn that and not just use the pun intended incumbent premises about some of this. Hey, I'm Ari Melber from MSNBC. You can see more of our videos right here. Or better yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel below. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with us and we appreciate that.